It's Season 5 of Beat the 92, and we've only got 25 teams to go, but with the spread of teams across the leagues, this might start getting a little bit harder right now. So, I've joined Bournemouth after two seasons at Ipswich, and this is a side that narrowly avoided relegation last season, but I'm hoping for another top half run and to tick off some more teams from the Premier League. Now, our current best 11 looks like this as we approach June, but I'll be making plenty of changes before the season begins, despite having a pretty terrible looking balance sheet to work with. As we jump forward, and despite this, we've managed to spend £64 million over the summer transfer window and came out the other side with a bit of a different looking squad. So, the first signing was already in place before I was, and that was Fran Navarro from Porto, who joined for £26.5 million. Now, he looks potentially a little bit overpriced, but he had decent, if not spectacular, loan spell at the club last season, so at least he was a known quantity, unlike myself. Now, Nathan Ake came in and then on a free transfer after his Manchester City contract expired, with a 32-year-old rejoin the club that he'd left seven years ago. At Mads Roslev, there's then signed from Leicester for 35 million again. This is probably a little bit overpriced, but I can take full blame for this one. Now, he's a good right back who can provide plenty of competition and for places at least in the defence. Now, another Man City defender came in on a free transfer as John Stones returned to England after three seasons in Saudi Arabia. This is another free transfer for our defence with some great experienced centre-backs joining the fold. Now, the goalkeeping situation at the club wasn't particularly great and by mid-August, I decided to bring in Jordan Pickford on loan from Spurs to become our new number one. Well, number 30 at least. We began the season lining up with this 5-2-3 formation that I'd hoped would allow us to be really strong defensively, but it left a little bit to de be desired, and I'm still on the fence about it, in all honesty. Uh, and our first chance at the scalp came with Aston Villa on match day three, but Villa are a really good side, and there was no upset here on this day. A late consolation goal from Traore was all we could muster, and it was not the best start to the season. Speaking of the start of the season, we made two more signings before the end of the uh, transfer window with Kalichi Iheanacho joining on a permanent deal from Leicester uh, to give more competition up front for the strikers and the wingers and Elhif Elmas returning on loan after his spell at Bournemouth last season. Now, long-term viewers of the channel will remember that he was an integral part of my Blackburn series back on FM22, elevating and then European Ewood. Now, the season started pretty poorly, including that Villa game. We got seven games in with five draws and no wins, and two of those draws came in the EFL Cup. We advanced both time due to penalties, which obviously counts for nothing, whoever we were playing against. Uh, and we were down in 18th place, and so it was time to change up those tactics. And the 5-2-3 was scrapped with a more conventional, traditional 4-3-3 installed in its place. Let's see how we get on with these new tactics and this new formation going forward. Now, with that in mind, we hosted Arsenal in the EFL Cup towards the end of October. I think it might have even been on my birthday. And we managed to score the upset and tick them off our list thanks to a 3-1 victory. A corner gave us a lead with a bit of scrappy defending, allowing us to double the, play, uh, double the advantage, with Clivert scoring on the break to make it three. Arsenal's late consolation, nothing really mattering there. Uh, Southampton were our next victims, and a simple 1-0 victory was all that was needed here, and we were finally rolling with our season now. By the time we reached the Ipswich game in December, we'd not lost a game for nearly three months, and this run sent us up the league table like a rocket where we sat in 10th place, with an outside shot at European football looking like a sensible target for the second half of the season. Ipswich provided little resistance, so they're not the side they were under me, with a long-range effort from Clivert being the only goal of the game. One more down. We had Everton in back-to-back -back games later in the month, and we'd need both of them. The first meeting in the EFL Cup saw us getting knocked out, as Pickford conceded three first-half goals against his former club, and we never really looked like we were in the game at all. Uh, the league game three days later was a bit of a different story, though, as we came from behind to win. Iheanacho peeled away at the back post for the equaliser, before tapping in the winner at the near post. Finally, another team ticked off. The final three games of the year were all against clubs that we still need to beat, so it's going to be a tough run-in. Unfortunately, the first two were against the top two in the Premier League. Man City smashing us 4-1 in a comfortable outing for them at the Etihad, despite an early goal from Navarro. And we put up little resistance against league leaders Chelsea as they ran out with an easy 2-0 victory. We've faced Chelsea so many times in this career so far, and they have beat us every single one. Now, the final game of 2027 came against Nottingham Forest, and this was a different story, as Clivert's early effort was enough to send us home at the end of the calendar year on a high. December saw a few missteps against those bigger clubs, but we still sat in ninth place at the turn of the year. We'd managed to knock off five more clubs from the chart, but there were only three left 
that we could still beat this season, so it was going to be a tricky second half of the campaign to navigate, and I might have to start plotting my next move in this challenge already. The first of those opportunities came away at Villa Park, but a sluggish performance left us trailing 2-0 with just 15 minutes remaining. An inspired fight back was on though, as Fran Navarro led a fast break and got his first goal back, and then a dangerous ball into the box from Cliver found its way all the way through to Krupe for the equaliser, but we couldn't quite clinch the winner in the final five minutes. Our next game of interest came at home to Leeds, who we had the comfort of facing again shortly afterwards should we need it. But we didn't as Traore and then Cliver got goals in the second half before a consolation from McIntyre late on was enough to give us the 2-1 victory. January was treacherous. That result against Leeds was welcome in every sense as we were quickly losing touch with the European places and in danger of falling into mid-table obscurity. We were down to just 19 teams to go, but of the teams we were left to face this season, it was only Chelsea in the penultimate game that we could actually tick off. Out of both cups, and so far the league was leaving us with just that one team left. Therefore, I decided to spend most of my time in March job hunting, and ultimately the Leeds job came up, so I applied, despite the fact they were in the relegation zone. Leeds made the approach for the end of the season, and I accepted, the rationale being that they were rock bottom now, so that would open up some championship clubs next season, and potentially a chance to strike off the final three Premier League sides before the end of the season after that. Now, a risky move though, as especially five days earlier, we smashed them again 2-1 for the second time in, two, in uh, six weeks. But it was official, at the end of the season, I was off to Ellen Road. It would be my fourth club in six seasons, and would definitely not be my last. Five points from the five games in April was less than ideal, and it set us up with a clash with league leaders Chelsea on the penultimate day. We would be without goalkeeper Pickford, who went down with injury during that poor run of form, and we sat 10th with two games to go and a very slim outside shot of Europe still on the table. That shot was looking great as we took a first half lead against Chelsea. Scott's ball into the box found Navarro, who turned on a sixpence and blasted home for the first goal of the game. But with 10 minutes left, a free kick in a dangerous place from Nkunku saw Chelsea show their skill as James peeled away unmarked at the back post and equalised. A win on the final day was enough to earn Bournemouth a place in the Europa Conference League for next season with ninth place, but I wouldn't be here to endure it as I'd got 19 teams to go when I was off to Leeds to see how many I could manage in as short a time as possible. Let's go.